song contest. The Eurovision of U.S. states. Yeah, my I've got a lot of Hulu ads for recently, but have not watched it. Yeah, never been heard. Why does Why does it sound American like it was run through contest. a translator forty times? <laughs> yeah, yeah. like it's the parody version that showed up on iCarly or something. Welcome back to American Song Contest. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, this is J.E. Realize, and I am back for a review of episode 4 of the American Song Contest. A contest that has drawn a lot of ire from mainstream audiences and indie audiences alike. But more on that at the end of the video. And maybe a little bit of seasoning peppered in throughout the rest of this. So, let's get into the viewing figures briefly. It's about 1.6 million last time around, episode 3. So it dropped. It wasn't that big a drop. It certainly exceeded expectations, but it was still kind of not great. I remember many shows getting cancelled and they had greater numbers than this. With that being said, there haven't been a lot of changes to the NBC song contest formula, except they threw in a recap of all the songs that had performed in the show in the end. But now let's talk about the qualifiers. We first got Tennessee. He qualified last week. But next up was Riker Lynch from Colorado, a song that... I'm kind of surprised got in at all. Apparently he ranked 6 from the juries. That is really surprising that the audience just carried him. I don't get it. I mean, it sounds more like a Wildcrat song than really anything substantial to me. Next up we got Alabama, and you know what? I am pleased. I am really pleased. This is a pretty top tier duet ballad sort of stuff. And it's really nice that it got through. And of course the final entry. And I remember being on the edge of my seat because to quote Valentina Moneta, I've been hurt before. But guess what? We got Texas. We got Texas. That is all I wanted, really. Not only do we got Texas, one of my favorite songs in the competition so far, if not my overall favorite, but my entire top three for the show has qualified. So really, besides Colorado, I'm laughing. By the way, Tennessee was number two on my list when I finally got around to make the ranking. It's just a solid country song. Now let's go into the acts, but sadly, this time around, we're not getting U.S. territories. We're getting the District of Columbia, if that matters to you. But American Samoa and Guam are going to be in show 5. Uh, I was kind of hoping we would have one territory per show. So I guess we should start with New Hampshire. Honestly, New Hampshire song wasn't really that interesting like it was a good song but i've heard this so many times in eurovision it's got energy but i've experienced that energy so many times in eurovision like it's not unbearable it's not forgettable it's just i'm used to it next we're going to go to nope because NBC, in their infinite wisdom, decided the one thing that was working for them, that they needed to keep in a world where they're changing everything, is the part of the show where each performance gets to know where they are on the jury table compared to every other performer that has come before in the same show. NBC, that is explicitly what I told you not to do! Okay. Maybe I wasn't being explicit enough. NBC f back to Nevada. And they're sending in an established artist known as the Crystal Method. Rather an established group, if that makes any sense. And they're doing a good job of like spacing them out one per show. We got Michael Bolton in show one, Macy Gray in show two, Jewel in show three, and we're gonna have Cisco in show five. <laughs> but as of now, 
we got Watch Me Now. How do I describe this song? It's what you would get if you made a mashup of the Doctor Who theme and Rhea Ripley's entrance from WWE. You cannot unhear that. And I don't usually go into electronic rock stuff, mainly because I don't spend the energy. I would probably find some good stuff from these guys, but I just cannot look away. This is a strong contender on the show. But considering how the competition is, I haven't yet decided where it's going to place. It hopefully should place high. Next up is Utah with the song Sad Girl by Savannah Kais. And the CMT Music Award goes to... Don't you find it funny when the CMT Music Award is run alongside the American Song Contest? We're gonna get eaten alive... again... What's the point? of having all these new original songs if they're not going to compete in song awards, or at least aren't considered eligible for them. But then again, Billboard doesn't care about these songs. As for the song, I was originally not really into country, but I think the American Song Contest has me coming around. I'm acknowledging that there's gonna be trite. But there are going to be some diamonds in the rough, as it were. And this one? The message speaks to me. This song I can relate to so well. Mostly. We'll get into the rest later on. But I feel a bit what she's feeling. I've always been looked at as happy, carefree, easygoing, energetic by my peers at college and university. I even received the nickname Happy from one of them. But when I go back into my room and mull things over, no one really knows the suffering that I'm dealing with. You won't know either because I've been told not to tell people about that. Okay, but there is one thing that isn't quite the same level. And to address that, I'm going to say this. To the people who love looking too much into something, STOP SAYING I'M TRANS! Next up, we got Washington, D.C. and the song I Like It by Neither. It's okay. The beat is okay. I'd put it on the playlist. But besides that, it's not really stand out. And it's a bit clunky at times. But now we go into Massachusetts. I think I may have found my new king. This song, I can only say, it reminds me of the song Gorillaz by Bruno Mars. Like if you heard that song, this song gives you a similar energy. This song gives me that level of resonance in a bit of a new package and I'm really feeling like this may just be my number one song of the entire show. And because of that, I feel like it's gonna be wrecked by the juries and 50-50 voting. I mean, Texas made it through? Maine did not. I'm kind of 50-50. Unless you count Michael Bolton, then my odds are better. But dagnap, so many good songs. And so many of my favorites just getting mistreated like this. How am I gonna cope? Now we go into Georgia. Funny thing. I'm not really into modern sounding stuff. You know, you got a bit of urban, hip hop, pop, trap, electronic, whatever the modern formula for a song is. I don't really resonate that well with that. But I can appreciate this song. It may not be my type of song, but you know what? I like this song. And I can appreciate what they're going for. And the fact that Stella Cole managed to get away with singing the whole song without dropping a swear word. I heard the original edit. That has gotta be some work. But hey, do it yourself, right? And now we have Hawaii. Hawaii's song was just fine. The problem is, it's 
not stand out. I seem to have a problem with a lot of songs that they're not stand out. Northern Mariana Islands from last week felt really authentic, for lack of a better word. It felt like I could just relax and enjoy and appreciate its honesty. Hawaii doesn't really have that sort of level. Mm. Now we move on to West Virginia, a song that my younger sister really loves. And you know what? It's not bad. Okay, I say that a lot of time. I should try clarifying. It knows what it is. It goes start to finish with this electronic thump. And you know it's pretty solid. It's not the most energetic, but it's kind of more electric lounge sort of thing. And really mellow. But now we move on to a song that I definitely have a lot to say. Arizona. A purely Spanish language song. Except for the fact that they changed some of the words to English in the performance. You sold out. 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 Besides that though, I can appreciate this. If you know me, you would know that I grew up with Mexican parents and I know Spanish. And many times I would go to Spanish language stations on the radio and hear songs like this and appreciate them. And the fact that the ASC is serve me something like this that I'm pretty sure Spain will not give me for the foreseeable future, I love that. Oh, getting on to Spain for the ESC, a bit of a tangent. Spain would never go for this sort of song, even if it could give them their first top five finish since what, 1995? Why? Because they just want to send a song of their style to the contest, whether it's Bandido or Dile Que La Quiero or Para Llenarme De Ti or even just a ballad like Quédate Conmigo. They would never send in a song that's, for instance, Catalan. Funny enough, the 1968 winner was supposed to be sent in Catalan, but you know how it was back in Spain. The head honcho said, no, no te puedes tener eso. So they instead ditched the artist, put in Maciel, and we got la 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 la. For that reason, they would never think of sending in a northern Mexican song because it just doesn't jive with the Castellano. But hey, mad, mad respect for NBC for giving me this. I really loved it, really enjoyed it. Don't think it's my number one. But I'll probably give this thing 30 points just because it is something I respect. Speaking of which, do you think there's going to be a Spanish voting block? I don't think there's going to be a Spanish voting block. For one, because Telemundo, which is part of the NBC Comcast umbrella, isn't replaying this contest. And two, there are so few viewers that I don't think Spanish-speaking people will even know the contest exists. Please prove me wrong. Next up is Pennsylvania, which I can't really say much about Pennsylvania. It's a nice R&B song. That's about it I can say. And finally, there's Washington State. I remember reading some newspapers on Alan Stone and how he was going to send in a song called A Little Bit of Both, and how it was going to be this commentary on how people aren't really truly of one side or another, about how we're this duality. And I'm like, eh, I'm not sure about this. It wasn't really up until the full songs were released that I was like, you know what, I can see myself liking this. And then we got the song and I'm like, this isn't my favorite. But I like this. You can't really do much with the performance, but it's pretty solid. Which is all I can ask about this song. And finally, we go on to the jury qualifier. Is it gonna be Utah? Nope. It's Washington. 
don't know if that's the choice I would make. But then again, the jury has always decided against me, and really, I can't do anything about that. But, hey, we still have the 50-50 qualifiers to be announced next week alongside the 5th show featuring Sweet Taboo from California. They will be facing up against the likes of Cali Soul, Cisco, Ada Leanne, Justin Gesso, Tanel, and many more. And I am really, really nervous. I have no idea how things are going to turn out. I barely heard any snippets from Sweet Taboo's song, and only recently did they start doing something, anything on TikTok. But besides that, I fear they're gonna let me down. It could be unjustified because, you know, Hollywood. Everyone comes into Hollywood wanting to Look for a shot at being something. Heck, Mike Mazanin came in to Hollywood. He even said that that was his own hometown, that he was ditching Ohio forever. Until he came out saying he supports the Ohioan candidate. Funny how that works. So much to get excited about. On the other hand, there are a few things to get disappointed about. Especially if you're a fan of song contests. There can be a lot of haters out there. People who don't feel like this song is anything special compared to American Idol or X Factor or America's Got Talent or The Voice or The Masked Singer or... Let me just throw this out. So you think you can dance in Dancing with the Stars. They're like, what is this? Why should I get invested in this? Which... Okay. Let me begin by asking a few questions. I don't know if this will help you, but... Mm -hmm. First off, have you heard of the contest? Second off, have you heard of the contest from anyone else? Do you remember what they said to you? Was what they said positive or negative? Did you only hear about the contest through them? Did you do any research yourself? Do you understand how the format works? If you listen to original songs on the radio and love them, why is a competitive format different enough to you that you would not consider watching it? The American Song Contest, as I've stated before, is a contest where each state fields in original songs by their local artists to compete against each other. They are not singing covers. Now, I get a lot of appeal from singing covers that you can rake up extra money and you can showcase extra talent by having people put new takes on old songs. It's just not for me. If I wanted to listen to the song, I'll listen to the original song most of the time. But I'm more yearning for people to try new things and I'm yearning for, as I said, this camaraderie and this competitive nature and, you know, people always trying to do better than they did before. Of course, not everything is perfect. We're not even close to the ideal. But if you say you don't like the American Song Contest, because other people told you that it sucks? To quote Grand Kenoki, maybe listen to a song before you say it all sounds the same. You can go to the NBC YouTube page and you will find all the performances and you can listen to each one. And I can guarantee you that's going to be better than watching the show first. Because you can get used to the format without getting bombarded with commercials and I get it. Listening to Snoop Dogg and Kelly Clarkson and watching all these commercials and Dolly Parton or whatever her name is and Miley Cyrus and T-Mobile having this Eminem's music lounge can be a bit too much. But after listening to the songs in the Eurovision Song Contest for the first time and watching their performances side by side, I was ready to go all in. 
I was ready to invest myself and take the good with the bad. That's just something you're gonna have to brace yourselves for. And if I change at least one mind, it'll be a victory for me. But I get it if you don't want to watch it. The problem is I've just been so psyched out by all this negative stuff. Like, I've seen the IMDB ranking for it, and it was a 4.1. Out of 5? No, out of 10. Google had their rankings 2.2 out of 5 stars. And I'm like... But of course. I have just never felt like I'm fighting for a show I believe in. Not like this. Another reference to the Kelsey Lamb song. Not even Steven Universe I felt like fighting for because while I was there from first broadcast and I pushed through the show because I wanted to see it finished and wanted to come to answers, it didn't have me as invested in the show's future as ASC. There is so much potential for this show that I wish could be realized, but right now we're dealing with a very tough spot. I'm just feeling a bit of a crisis right here, because this is the song contest I have always wanted, and yet here it is just slipping through my fingers. I hate this part right here, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you know what the reference is, but I can't give up on it. This is the only ASC that has existed or ever existed. Some people might say the Great American Song Contest. I have never heard of the Great American Song Contest until I researched the American Song Contest. I have no idea what to say about that. All I can do, though, is just keep fighting for the show. With that being said, do the feedback thing. Like, comment, subscribe, or dislike if you're into hashtag ASC hate. Follow me on Twitter at JERealize. This has been JERealize. I'll see you next time, and Viva Mexico!